I grew up in a hunting family. I was always around guns, and I love shooting my pellet gun in the backyard. But if someone had said that there was a sport shooting out there, I'd be like, okay, what's that? You know, it sounds cool, but there is a lot of them, Matt. Sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's all right. I'll try. Um, around the time I was 14, uh, a guy that my dad knew, he was an FBI firearms instructor back in New Jersey. My dad worked at Fort Dix, a military base back home. And the FBI leased one of the ranges. And so they were, this guy and my dad were talking about how to pay for college, and the guy said that there were uh, colleges out there that had shooting teams and gave scholarships. Does your son <coughs> like to shoot? And so my dad said, yeah, he loves to shoot. He's always out in the backyard with his pellet gun. All right, we'll bring him over. So I went over there. And I remember this guy had me shoot a little bit of pistol, a little bit of rifle, and a little bit of shotgun. He's like, man, you're pretty good with that rifle. I'm like, OK. And so he said, do you want to give this a whirl? And I said, well, yeah, why not? It's kind of fun. You know, I don't mind. I was a baseball player at that point. So you know, I never really did anything else other than that. So I started going over with him about maybe, I don't know, once a week or so. And he taught me the basics, taught me the positions, taught me some mental skills that were really helpful. And I uh, did that for probably about three months. And during that period, he found a, a club that was about an hour away from where I grew up. And they had a junior rifle team, just a private club. And the reason why he picked this club was uh, one of the girls that was on the national team, the national junior team, was a member of that club. Her dad was the coach. And he's like, well, if they have someone on the national team, it's got to be a pretty good place to go. So let's try that. So off we went. And I remember the first time I walked in that range, I was so nervous. I had no idea what I was getting myself into. You know, he was, I was just this little country kid, and here I walk into this range with these, you know, professionals, which were, you know, juniors just like you guys. So uh, I got started there, and I was training uh, at the at the start just once a week on Friday nights. And I actually started in small, where I didn't pick up an air gun until like at least a year into the game, because air guns back then weren't really that good. They weren't as good as today. Uh, it wasn't really much fun to shoot. So I started doing that. And I uh, started improving, started shooting some competitions. And about the same time that I started, there was another kid in the state who was the same age as me. And we were about the same at the start, score level wise. And then all of a sudden, he started getting a lot better. And I remember my dad went and talked to his dad. So, what's this? What is, what is he doing? What is, he's dry firing. He's dry firing at home. So my dad's like, well, if you want to get better, you should probably start dry firing. Because I could only get to the range once a week. So I'd be down in the basement, dry firing, trying to figure things out, and then all of a sudden, yeah, my score started coming up too. So after about a year or so, I think that was, uh, yeah, 96. In 1997, I'd been shooting for roughly a year, year and a half. Uh, I got this letter in the mail that I was invited to the Junior Olympics. Okay, what's this? <laughs> so um, I asked my coach, and he said it was, you know, the biggest junior match, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, okay, that's cool. Should I go? He's like, of course you should go. <laughs> And money was an issue in those days. And so uh, I decided to come, and it was a wonderful experience. I kind of just you know, piecemealed stuff together. I didn't have a custom jacket or pants or anything. Uh, actually, I think I borrowed my coach's stuff, and he was way bigger than me. Uh, but it worked, and I think I even borrowed his gun. So I came out here and shot, and it just had a great time. Uh, it was a really big eye-opener for me to see some of the best juniors in the country shooting. I was really inspirational. And they just kind of kept going from there. Well, then I go home. That was in April of 97, so I'm coming up on my 20 year anniversary for my first time here. Man, I'm, I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, I go home and it was probably maybe not even a month later, I get another letter in the mail that I was invited to this uh, National Junior Clinic. And back in those days, if I remember right, it was like an NRA section or something for juniors and they would invite like the top 20 juniors who, already, who hadn't already been there in previous years. And this was in Arkansas in July for two weeks. And so I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. So I decided to go. And at that time, Dave Johnson, our current CEO and former rifle coach and my <coughs> rifle coach in Alaska, uh, he was still a competitor in those days. And it's kind of funny, like if you talk to Dave, and he still doesn't remember what happened, but in those days when he was an athlete, he was a resident here, uh, Bob Mitchell, who was our former CEO, and in those days the rifle coach, sent Dave there as punishment. <laughs> Dave has no idea what, what he did wrong. He still doesn't remember, but he's like, yep, you're going to go do this clinic in Arkansas in July. You're going to go sweat your butt off for two weeks. Okay. So Dave was there. Uh, Ron Wigger was there. Gary Hardy was there. And uh, a couple other pretty good coaches. And we would go there, and every morning, we would start at, like, say, 8 o'clock and shoot to, like, 11, 11, 30. And then it was just so hot, you couldn't shoot anymore. We'd go eat lunch, and then usually in the afternoons, we would have some classroom time. 
And as far as for me, when I first got into the sport, of course my initial idea was just to go to college on a scholarship. I, I had no Olympic aspirations, but the guy that got me involved in the sport said, hey, you could go to the Olympics if you wanted to. You're really good. And I was like, yeah, whatever. You know, I'm, I'm one of billions. That's, that's impossible. So I went to this camp, and one day Dave put up on the chalkboard the process. The four-year process, Olympics to Olympics, what's in between the World Cups, Championships of the Americas, Pan American Games, World Championships, all these different things and how it worked. Okay, that's cool. And then next to it, he put the process of, okay, here's how you make the national junior team. These are the competitions you need to go to. Here's how you make the national team. These are the competitions you need to go to. Here's how you go to World Cups. And here's how you make the Olympic team. Once I saw this all kind of laid out on the, on the whiteboard, I was like, man, that makes sense. I want to do that. Yeah, 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 I want to do that. I can do that. And so that's kind of when it, things kind of came together, and that's right then. I still remember that moment sitting in that classroom. That's when I got the Olympic bug, like, yeah, I really want to do this. And so from that time forward, like, I really got focused and just started going after it. Um, and right about that same time uh, was when I had to give up baseball. Like I said, I was a baseball player for a long time, and that was my number one thing. And I remember going into spring training of my junior year of high school. I said, okay, I'm gonna try to play baseball because I love it. I'm gonna try to shoot and I'm gonna try to do really well in school because school was always important to me. And if anything seems like it's suffering, I feel like I'm just kind of strung out and something's gotta go. I wasn't quite sure what it was gonna be, but obviously school can't go. But it's gotta be shooting or, or baseball. So I went through spring training and at the end of it, I said, you know what, I can't do this all. This is just too much. And I thought about it and thought about it, and I was like, you know, I really believe that I'm going to go further in shooting than I'm going to go in baseball. So unfortunately, I have to give it up. But I still remember the day I told my coach, like, hey, I'm done. And uh, the look on his face, I'll never forget that. But it was it was tough. You know, all my friends were ball players, and you know, it's just kind of where I went. But it was the best decision I could have made because uh, it, it gave me more time to focus on school and also to focus on on this. And obviously, it's paid off. So then, as far as the whole college process, um, I did get the scholarship, and I remember when I was going through the whole selection process as a senior in high school, uh, I went through the summer before my senior year, and of course I had friends on most, most of the college teams. Like it. In those days, West Virginia was a great school, um, Alaska was a great school to go to, you know, great competitive team, Kentucky was great, it still is. And those are really the three schools I was looking at. And I wanted to go to a school which, number one, had a good educational system, like had the programs that I wanted, and I was gonna get what I needed. Because to me, education's came. Like, shooting is important, I can do it my whole life, but as far as being a serious part of my life, that's only a part of it. You know, it, it only has a certain time period, and then you've gotta move on to something else. And if you've never really taken the time to put it into your education, well, you're kinda stuck. And so that was why it was always important. So that was like first thing. The second thing, and I would say not number one, but maybe number 1.1, .1, was the shooting team. And I wanted to make sure I was gonna go to a place that was gonna take me as far as I wanted to go, which was to go to the top, as far as I could. And I wanted to go to a team where I wasn't gonna be the best guy, where I was gonna be in a good environment, just around a group of, a good group of people that get along, that help each other, that really love each other, it's like a family. And I, it, I always had the feeling that in that time, Alaska was probably gonna be the best fit. And I just thought Alaska sounded cool. So I went up there for my first recruiting trip, and uh, I remember, <laughs> I get off the plane, wake up the next morning, and uh, the guys come get me at the hotel, and they're like, hey, let's go fishing. All right, cool, so we went fishing. And then, you know, I did, did visits with professors and all that, and uh, just had a good time with the team, and I'll never forget getting on the plane and going home, it felt like something was missing. It was like, like your homesick. I was like, yeah, I think that's probably where I need to end up. So then after that, I went to West Virginia, had a great time there. It was a, it was a, a great visit. Marsha was, was the coach in those days, and, and I was really gracious for that. Um, but it just wasn't quite what I was looking for. Not that I had any but it just didn't fit me. And then the same thing with Kentucky. So I went to Alaska, and I had four, four awesome years up there. Loved it. And like I said earlier, like, we, were, we were a family. We helped each other, we worked well together, and I learned so much. So. That is that. Now, as far as you guys go, I wanted to try to leave you with some things, like ask some questions for you just to mull over, and then give you some ideas for how you can how you can improve, how you can take take this game further. With your shoes. So the first one, and I think this is relevant for anybody, whether you're a beginner or even whether you're a professional, you 
have to look in the mirror and ask yourself, why do I shoot? Why do I do this? Hopefully, number one is because you like it. But also, number two, like, you know, is this something I want to do just as a hobby, or do I really want to take this further? Is this something that exercises, or I guess maybe, yeah, exercises a need that I have, a competitive need? I mean, what needs is it filling? <coughs> and I would say the next question you need to ask yourself is, how good do you want to be? This is paramount. I hear so many people that say, I want to go to the Olympics. Do you really? Do you know what that means? That's a dream that everyone has, but you have to feel it in your heart what you want to do. And there are things like, do I want to do this just because it's a hobby? I want to do it for fun. Do I want to go on to, to college shooting? Do I want to make the national junior team? Do I want to make the national team? Do I want to make the Olympic team? Do I want to win the Olympics? Or do I want to be a legend? That's even higher. So step one is first asking that question and being honest with yourself. Step two is taking action, taking action upon that. Because each one of those things I just listed, whether it's I want to do it for a hobby, okay, do it whenever you want, or I want to be a legend, those are two completely different things and commitment levels and work levels. Not that it's not fun, but you need to be honest with yourself and understand what you're getting yourself into. So, I'll, leave thing, I'll, I'll start talking now about kind of some things to improve. And number one, and these are things that apply to beginners as well as guys like me, the basics. Learn the basics really well and do the basics perfectly. You will always be working on them no matter what level you're at. And these are things like number one, vision. You can't hit what you can't see. So make sure you go get your eyes checked. Things like sight alignment. Those are all vision related things that people from beginners to professionals make mistakes with. Uh, trigger control. Trigger control is something I, I still work on consistently. Whether I'm nervous, whether I'm calm, whatever. Breaking the shot cleanly is something that you have to master. Three, be consistent. Always do the same thing. Right or wrong, always do the same thing. Even if it's wrong, because if you're doing it consistently, maybe you can figure out what to be better. But if you're always doing it different, you never know what's doing what. And then probably the last one is just be technically sound with your positions. You know, if you have good positions, you have a better hold, it makes it easier to shoot better. So those are all kind of the basic skills. Two, I kind of already mentioned this before. Learn as much as you can. Like everything that we're doing here, it's just skills. Some people are more naturally gifted at some things than others, but it's all just skills that we have to master. So, refer back to the how good do I want to be part and then start looking up and trying to learn what it means. What do I have to do if I want to get to that level? What, what are the qualities of the people that are at that level? Start figuring out where your gaps are. Make steps toward those. Educate yourself. Uh, the technical part that I talked about, you know, start studying things like the positions. Watch the best shooters shoot. There are lots of books out there about you know, the, tech, the technical things, the positions, or uh, ammo testing, I mean, you name it. There are so many things out there that you can start learning about. Same thing, education. Mental. You know, everyone says that this game is like 90% or 95% mental or, or whatever it might be. Yes, it is heavily mental. No doubt about that. But it's also very technical. But as far as the mental skills go, education. Like there, there are shooting, shooting books out there on, like as far as the mental game goes, like Lenny Basham has his with winning in mind. There's a new one out there now. Um, the Bullseye Mind by Raymond Pryor. There are some other ones. There are books about um, you know, mental aspects of golf. I mean, golf is essentially the same sport that we play, just hitting a ball. Um, general mental books, there's all kinds of things. The more you understand, the more knowledge you have, the more power you have, and how you can apply that to yourself. The next part, plan. Nothing gets done without a plan. I mean, things can happen by accident, but it's certainly not going to be what you want most of the time. And this is one aspect that I feel that I've done better than a lot of people. I've always not known where I want to go, and I'm realistic about where I'm at, and then I'm pretty good at figuring out how to get there, coming up with that roadmap. So I may have like a goal competition, you know, six months, a year from now, sometimes four years from now, and I can start figuring out, okay, how am I going to get there? And what I would say for you guys is be able to be free to experiment. At a minimum, try to set a goal for a competition, you know, and it could be a few months from now. Look at a calendar, print out a calendar or take a calendar and start writing down how you want to get there. And 
and then start taking those steps. It's okay if you don't do it perfect. That's part of learning. Make mistakes and then figure out how you can tweak that and make it better. But without a plan and without a date for that plan, when you want to complete it by, you're not going to get there. Let's see. Go to school. Shooting school. Go to camps. If you can go to camps, go to them. Try to learn what you can. Obviously, if you trust the instructors or, or whoever's teaching the, the clinics and things, do that. It's just extra things to put in your, in your toolbox. Um, surround yourself with great shooters. Spend time around them. Start to learn. Uh, another one, too, is I have at home a performance library. I probably have 30 or 40 books about the mental game, about um, shooting itself, about even like center fire things like long range accuracy and wind and things like that. A lot of those things apply, but I also have books about uh, business books. I went to business school. About success. Success is success. It doesn't matter whether it's in you know, the business walk of life, in another sport, or in shooting. It's all the same stuff. Study what it, what it is to do. Let's see. Number three. Practice a lot. You don't get better if you don't practice. Now, as far as the, when we refer back to the how good you want to be part, if you want to do it for a hobby, hey, whenever you want, no big deal. If you want to go to college, I would say if you're, you know, in high school, minimum three days a week. And if you're putting in quality time, two to three hours of those three days a week, you can improve and you can probably do pretty well. If you want to be on the national junior team, probably three to four times a week, good quality training sessions, two to three hours at a time, yeah, you can probably get on the junior team. National team, probably four plus times a week, two to three hours a day, and then maybe some other stuff on top of that. Olympic team, you're looking at five days a week. Anywhere from a short day being a two hour training session to a total of it could be even eight hours, just depends on what you're doing. But it's a lot of work, because you're trying to master those skills and you gotta get the job done. You want to win the Olympics? Same thing like to make the Olympic team, except you just need to do it more consistently. And if you want to be a legend, do the win the Olympics one, but do it every day, all the time. It's just how you, I mean, you have to have ups and downs. You can't do everything the same every day, but it's constant and it never stops. Because a legend, by definition, it's over your whole career. So, number four. This is kind of one I think that applies to a younger crowd. If you want to be really good at something, by definition, you're going to be different than everybody else. Don't be afraid of that. A lot of people want to fit in, and I was there too. It's, it's, it's different being different. But at the same time, you have to understand that by definition, you can't be normal like everyone else, and it's okay to be different. It doesn't mean that you, you know, you're not going to be a great friend. It doesn't mean that you're not going to be a great person. It doesn't mean you have to be weird. Just understand that you might be a little bit different than your friends. Like your responsibilities are different. Like, hey, we're getting together. Let's go to a movie on Friday night. I'm sorry, guys. I've got to, you know, I've got to do this, or you know, I've got a match early next morning, or you know, whatever it might be. You might not be able to do everything that all your friends do, and that's okay. Do what you can, but just understand that you're different. The other one too that goes along with that is be careful who you surround yourself with. If you want to be successful, you have to surround yourself with people who are, I wouldn't say successful, obviously that's nice, but people who don't take you away from that, who don't bring you down. People who make you feel good. And not like in a false way, but in a good way, like genuine friends. If you get in with a bad crowd who are, you know, people who are just doing stupid stuff or taking you down from where you want to go, you just got to distance yourself from that. Life goes on. You'll make new friends. But don't let people bring you down. Number five. This one's pretty simple. Discipline. Working hard and doing the things that others are too lazy to do. It's that simple. Discipline. Number six. All right, show of hands. Are we shooters or are we athletes? Who says shooters? Raise your hand. Athletes. Yeah, good answer. I like that. <laughs> Excellent. Now, what it means to be an athlete, and that's why I said like earlier about the studying about successful people and all that stuff, a lot of the things that other athletes do, I mean, yeah, their sport might be different, but their habits are the same. Walk around with your head up high, you're an athlete. And in going with an athlete, that means like understanding how to use your body, how to work with your body, so exercise. Exercise is important for shooting. Doesn't mean you have to be a triathlete, doesn't mean you have to be like some super strong guy, or strong girl. Um, Exercise, learn how the body works. Learn how to control those muscles. The better you're able to do those things, I promise you, the better you're able to 
you will be able to shoot. And also one thing that I'm, well, I think is really important for shooting is just the cardio stuff. You shoot in between heartbeats. So if you have a lower heart rate, it's going to be easier to shoot. And your body reacts better to stress and better to heat when it's hot outside. Number seven, love what you do. It doesn't mean that every day is going to be fun. It doesn't mean that you're not going to get frustrated. It doesn't mean that you're not going to want to throw things now and then. But the process. Love the process because when you get to the end of the day and you finally see the lights start clicking on and achieving your goals or at least making headway toward it, that's pretty rewarding. So love what you do. You're doing this because you like it, hopefully. So don't forget that. And probably the last one, like closing thoughts, I would say, you know, everybody in here, you know, you're all, you're all young. I would challenge you to be great. And that doesn't mean like, you know, try to be great this week, but like in life, make a difference. Make a difference to the people around you. Be a good friend, be a good sister, be a good, you know, whatever. A good, good kid, a good, a good dog. But make a difference, like now, to the people around you, and also as you go further. Don't be afraid of that. Make the world a better place. That's something I strive to do every day. Let's see, hopefully I'm doing good at that. Anyways, so that's all I have there. Questions. I want questions, good questions. The guys are awesome, so you guys have some big shoes to fill. Questions. Don't be shy. I don't bite. Was it that good? Do you have any questions? All right, go for it. So what is your, when you were a shooter, what was your daily routine? Like you went to school and then did what? All right, at what level? At, uh, at the level where these kids are. So when you first started, or when you first okay. realized you wanted to move higher. All right, when I first wanted to move higher, probably after that camp in, in, uh, in 1997, I was trying to get behind the gun. Because like I said, I didn't have access to a range right where I lived. I would have to drive somewhere, and of course, you know, I had school, and I had other stuff to do, so I couldn't always do that. I would say I was behind the gun probably three days a week. Uh, I would try to, especially in the wintertime, I would try to get to the range on a Wednesday, a Friday, and then usually there was a competition on the weekend. And then I, when I finally did get a decent air gun, my basement wasn't quite big enough for 10 years. I would go like eight and a half. But I would kind of set the target up in the corner and I would try to shoot, you know, maybe at least another day or two. So I was honestly behind the gun three to five days a week at that, at that stage. Next question. Yes, thank you. What about burnout? How, like, how do you deal with that? That's a wonderful question. That's a really good question. Burnout. Depending on who you talk to, some people might say sometimes burnout is just a lack of goals, and I don't agree with that. Um, you have to be able to manage it. And I would say you need to make sure that there are always peaks and valleys to what you're doing. You know, like, say if you go to you know, a competition like this, you know, if you feel like after you get home, like, I'm so tired, I've got so much schoolwork to do, blah, 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 you know, and oh, I need to go to the range. Focus on the other responsibilities. You know, take care of the job that needs to be done. So if you need to go to like, you know, okay, I need to spend this week worrying about school. I really don't want to worry about shooting. Then do that. Make sure you do that well. But make sure you're also setting the goals that it does have a little bit to do with goals so that you're pushing forward towards something. But if you feel like tired and it's like, man, I'm just, I can't do it. My brain's not there or whatever. Maybe cut back a little bit. You know, instead of trying to train five days a week, Try to get two days out. At least you're doing something. And instead of doing like a four hour training session, just put in an hour. Get behind the gun. Do something worthwhile. And don't try to push it too hard. Now, as far as like long term burnout, if you get to the point where you're like just hating life, hating the sport, do something else. Like that was actually one thing I forgot to mention. You know, I talked about the love part. And that's where, you know, I ask people, why do you do this? If it's not because you love it, if it gets to the point where it's like, you know what, it's past its time, I had fun, whatever, then move you don't feel free, move on to something else. Like that, you always gotta know where that is. And even like that bothers me at the I'm like, man, do I really wanna keep doing this? I've been doing this a long time. You know, is the grass greener on the other side? I don't know. And so I always have to manage like, my own motivation, make sure I don't push super hard so I reach for that place where I'm just sitting. So you always gotta come up kind of go like this. Does that make sense? Okay. Next question. What do you got? Game, like say an hour leading up to the competition. And I would say it's 
It kind of depends a little bit, but my general routine is about the same. I want to be at the range and just go and just get my stuff ready or dry fire or do whatever. Um, some places there are. Some places I can go and there's a, a, like a dry fire area. So maybe I'll go in and, you know, if it's an arrow I can match, maybe I'll go just get in my stuff and I'll dry fire a little bit, just get kind of get comfortable, and then just kind of take it easy and get in my own little world. Uh, one thing I do like to do is a physical warm up. And it's basically, it has to do with some active warm up, which is getting the muscles working. So I'll do like some active things on like skipping or getting the muscles moving. I can wear jeans, so I can't really do it. Um, and then incorporate that with some stretching. That is part of it. And a lot of times I'll listen to music. I really think music's a wonderful thing. And as far as saying, like some people might think, oh, I need to listen to something calm or whatever. Listen to whatever you have a taste for that day. Whatever makes you feel happy, listen to it. And it could be like, for some, Sundays for me, it's, it's all different genres. It could be big band music, it could be country, it could be rock, it could be all kinds of different things. It's just whatever I'm in the mood for that day. And I listen to it, it makes me feel good. It gets me in my own little world. The whole point is getting my, my mind and my body prepared for what I'm about to do. Because getting in my own little world mentally is kind of the way I do that, by listening to music, doing my routine, kind of block all the other things out. And it's not like people can't talk to me, I just kind of, you know, do it thing. Uh, then on top of that, once once they say athletes to the line, so like say here, the half hour before your first shot, they let you in. So I come in and I'm at least already dressed. Like I have my underclothes on, my body's ready to go. I come in and say like era. I'll quickly set up my stuff, not rushing, get my stuff up on the line, and then if I still have a little bit of time, maybe I'll just sit there for a minute, kind of chill out. And then about five minutes before they say prep and cider start, I get up there and I start holding. I can't dry fire, but I can hold. Getting my position ready. That way when they say start for sighting period, I'm ready to go. Boom, I load the gun and I know the quality of that first sighter shot is going to be a good shot. It may not be in the tank ring, but it's a good shot. And then I just adjust my sights and then keep going. That way when I get to the actual competition and they say start, I am 100% ready to go. Does that make sense? Next. Oh, there's one over here. Can we do a follow-up to Elena's question of burnout? Yes. And that is, uh, yeah, if you're totally, totally, sometimes it is time to, to go find something else. Yeah. What about, you know, you know you, you still want these, you have these goals, dreams, yeah. and desires, uh, but you're really, you're re reaching an end. Can you talk a, a bit about the importance of, say, within the cycle, six months or a year, um, Taking a break. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm, I'm, as, especially as I've gotten more mature as an athlete, and I've, I've probably through about the last like, 10 to 15 years, I've done this pretty well. Um, I know when it's time to take a break. You can't push all the time. Like, say, so I'm actually still taking a break from the Olympics. Like, after the Olympics, I was done. Did not want to see again. Didn't want to talk about shooting. I honestly didn't want to see anybody from shooting. I just wanted to push it. Yeah. Get away. I had enough. And, like, and then I committed to going to World Cup Final, which was a couple months later. I'm like, well, if I committed to going to this competition, I have to be somewhat ready. That was like pulling teeth. It was so hard. Like, you know, I'm going to the range. I'm like, man, I really don't want to shoot today. I really don't want to go to the competition. But I'm like, you know, I'll see my friends. And it's a great match. And, and it's, it's just a good way to finish the season. All right, come on. I can do this. You know, but, but my quality of training wasn't as high as normal. And I, and I just managed that. Like, I didn't force myself to go every single day. I'm like, you know what? If I go every single day, all I'm going to do is push the pedal to the metal. If there's no gas in the tank, it's not going to work. So I cut it back. I just said, maybe I'll go and shoot three days. Three good quality days, and then go do whatever I want on the other days. Or maybe go for a run, or just clear my head, whatever. But now, like, after, after that point, Guns are in the locker. <laughs> but I have to say, like, since the new year, I've, you know, I'm, I'm still coaching a couple people in check, like a couple of the guys that I train with every day. Um, and we help each other. And so sometimes I'm like, you know, I really feel like shooting. And so I'll get my stuff out, and I'll go and I'll shoot some, and you know, don't get mad at me because I'll beat them or something. <laughs> and then I, then I tell them, like, hey. <laughs> but uh, anyways, you know, you just have to gauge that. And so I do believe that breaks are important. Uh, it just depends on the, on the level. You know, some people like, you know, at the college level, if you're really trying to improve, like, you, you can't really take the whole summer off. You need to still be doing something because, you know, the season, you get back to school, and you probably have your first competition within a month, but you just took three months off. And it 
doesn't work. You need to be doing something, but you need to manage that. That's a good question. Thank you. All right, so next one, you. If you're in a competition and something happens that somebody just knocks you off again, how do you get your head back into it? That's a good question. I like that one. Okay, how do you get your head back in the game after something crazy? Well, the first thing I would say is take a break. If you're distracted, sometimes if you're standing up there, just put the gun down if it's not loaded, of course. Undo your jacket, undo your pants, and just walk away. Sit down, and if it's really, really distracting, maybe just do some breathing. One thing that I like to use, and I told several of the people who have come down to work with me, breathing. Breathing is your anchor. And there's a reason why monks have been doing meditation for thousands of years to get in their own world. That's exactly what it is. Just breathe. Just breathe and feel some relaxation coming into your body. Get your mind focused back on what you want to do. And sometimes, like, it's okay to recognize in your brain, like, you know, hey, I'm distracted. My thoughts are over here. Well, all right, is that helping me or hurting me? Well, it's probably not helping. Okay, well, what's important? And then focus on the things that actually help you, the things you have control over. And sometimes it's pretty crazy what happens. But push that aside. What's important in this moment is right now. Okay, and as soon as you feel better, go back up and just progress. Make sense? Okay. Next question. Are you combat nervous before now? That's a great question. Nerve. What's the question? How do you combat nerves before a competition? So that one's similar to the one I just answered, like about getting back in the game, like if something crazy happens, breathing. Um, I would say before a competition, you know, part of it is getting in my own little world by listening to music. The other part is making sure I focus on the things I have control of. You know, sometimes nerves are just like, you know, it could be expectations, your own expectations, coach, coach expectations, parent expectations, all kinds of different things. But all of that is just a perception. It's what you feel. And if you have an expectation, say for a score level, or you know, a finishing place, or whatever it might be, those are things you really don't have control over. A little bit you have control over the score, but you can't make the score happen. But what you can make happen is the work that you do. The things that you can control, how you think. You can control how you think. You can direct your mind how you want it to go. And the good thing is like with the mind, if you just kind of let it go, it's like a little kid. It just kind of goes over here, and then it goes over here. You know, It just kind of bounces around. But if you tell it what to do, hopefully it'll listen. So that's why it's important. Hopefully. But no, you can do that. So control that. Control your performance. And understand that, like, okay, if I can control my performance, I can control my mind, and think about the, the work that I need to do. You know, I need to do X, Y, and Z. And I'm given that shot the best chance I can. And if you do that, if it's a 40 shot match, if I do that 40 times in a row, yeah, I probably did the best I possibly could, regardless of what the score is. And if the score is not what you want, then just objectively look at it and say, well, I need to do this, this, and this better. Okay, no big deal. I can do that. Or I can control that or work through it. Does that make sense? I think it's kind of like the objective part and just the uh, focusing on the work. The other thing, too, and this always helped me, like to understand that the, the sun's coming up tomorrow. This is not like that. Regardless of what happens today or tomorrow or anything, the sun's coming up. Your friends are still going to like you. Your parents are still going to love you, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's going to be fine. Like life goes on. You know, I mean, mo a lot of you probably know my history. I mean, I made two huge mistakes in the Olympics and just gave away gold medals. I'm still here. Life's great. You know, I came back. You can always come back. There are going to be other competitions. So I, that, and that's always relieved the pressure for me. It's like, you know what? It's okay. Let's do it. Make sense? Okay. Next question. I'll do one more. What was the question? <laughs> what was the, question? the question is how do you deal with criticism after a bad match, whether it's from like, people around you or in my case, like, that's what you're um, You know, when you look like leading in front of billions of people, and you know, media talks about that, it's, it's not the most beautiful thing. Um, as far as criticism, it's it, probably the best way is to do it a positive way. Hold your head up high. 
you know, I would bet money that no one ever goes into a competition and purposely screws up. Why would you do that? I mean, really, you're probably going out there giving it everything you had. And as long as you gave it everything you had, regardless of whether it was good or bad, I mean, it's like, I did the best I could. Maybe I'm not the best I'll ever be, but I did the best I could at the moment. And so, just shrug it off. Like, you know what? Opinions are like butts. Everyone's, everyone's got one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and that's what <laughs> And they all stink. Yes. You're not allowed to leave, man. What one goal are you currently working on that has nothing to do with shooting? <laughs> Garlic got you. Survive. <laughs> Four kids. We just had our fourth child, so I mean, trying to survive is. is no, no, I guess. No, I mean, that is partially true, but I would say you have to have personal goals. Like, I, yes. I, I'm, I'm absolutely, and I, and I know that's where you were going with it. Um, I am absolutely adamant about not being just one-sided. That means you're only a shooter and you have nothing else in your life. That is, that's the quickest way to burn out that you can possibly have. You have to have balance. You have to have other things in your life, you know, things that you love to do. And it could be, you know, I don't care. It could be whatever. It could be a different hobby. Like, I have tons of different things in my life. But I would say actual like big goals for something. Man, that's a good question. I think probably this year, and this sounds really stupid and probably just boring, but get my garden going. Yeah, like that's really right. like get my Perfect. garden. Like I want, you know, I want this year I want to grow good sweet corn. I want to grow a whole bunch of hot peppers. I want to do all these things. Um, but actually do it. Like I haven't had time. I've been traveling so much the last however many years. I haven't had time to do that. Like, I'm always gone in the springtime. This year, I'm kind of home. All right. 
Good. So that's like a stupid distraction. <laughs> it's not a stupid distraction. That's exactly what I'm saying. Yeah, that's but, me. But those types of things, you know, take care of things at home. Like I'm a very goal-oriented person. Mm -hmm. So there's always like, I have a list of things probably that long at home that I want to do. Who knows when I'm going to get to them all, but. But this year, the garden. The garden would be nice. Excellent. <laughs> Oh yeah, look where I've got corn like this and you know, peppers everywhere. Make a corn maze. <laughs> right. <laughs> An ideal sugar diet. Ideal. That depends, that depends on the person. Um, I would say I'm a little bit more general when it comes to diet. You didn't hear that, like an ideal shooter diet. And this I would say is kind of kind of more for anybody. Not just not exactly just shooters. One thing for sure that doesn't help us is sugary stuff. I mean, really simple sugars. And, I, and I'm talking about like sodas, super syrup and sweet tea. And I love sweet tea, by the way, so. But I usually thin it out, uh, especially before you shoot. Uh, candy bars, cakes, things like that. I mean, you've got to live a little. I'm not saying like completely cut them out, but minimize. Because quick sugar doesn't help you, especially before you shoot. You get that quick sugar in your system, phew, sugar spikes, and an hour later, you're feeling like that. And when your sugar starts going down, that's when you start getting weird movements that don't make any sense. Um, the other thing just general with, with diet is consistency of eating. Making sure you're always getting a little bit of fuel in there. Like say if we're up here, like for me especially, like a three by 40. Okay, I wanna eat two hours before a three by 40. So that's two hours. So now the competition takes two hours and 45 minutes. Now I'm five hours or four hours and 45 minutes in. The final's going to be at least an hour after that, sometimes more, and the final takes an hour. This is an all-day thing. In order to keep my focus here, because your brain works just like any muscle, it needs, it needs energy. I consistently have something coming in my system. But the start of that is a good breakfast. Breakfast for me, what's always worked well, um, eggs settle well. Eggs are a great energy source. They give me plenty of protein. There's a little bit of fat in there, which also sustains the, the duration of how that, how that, um, how the energy breaks down and your body uses it. Um, getting some complex carbohydrates, which could mean oats, it could mean uh, whole grain bread. Um, try to stay away from really greasy stuff, especially before you shoot or the day before. Greasy stuff makes you feel tired, it's like um, Juice is fine, as long as you don't go crazy with it, because that has sugars in it as well, but it's a different type of sugar, so the way your body uses it is a little bit different. Um, so that's not bad, like orange juice is fine, a little bit of apple juice, or apple juice 50-50 with water is fine. You know, hydrate well, always hydrate well. That's, that's what it's like, not so sure. um, What else? People always ask me about caffeine, and I'm gonna tell you, that's kind of person. I love caffeine, I love coffee, I love it. Every day I have a cup of coffee in the morning. And some days if I'm not shooting, I might have more. Um, if you don't, and take a lot of caffeine, don't start. Your body doesn't need it. But if you already take in some, then you know, see how your body reacts to it. Try to pay attention. Like for me, I don't really notice a difference. Like, I'm fine. So I just go with it. Um, usually the worst one for me is the sugar, you know, the simple sugars. Once I'm competing, like say for a three by 40, I try to make sure I'm always drinking along the way, and I wanna make sure that I'm eating something before I get hungry. So say like, okay, I've eaten breakfast, a good breakfast two hours before I compete, and usually somewhere, maybe between kneeling and prone, or definitely prone and standing, I'll, I'll nibble on something. I have some meal replacement bars um, that are actually designed for weight loss, but they have, they have a very low glycemic index, so the sugar content is not so high, that the balance is good. It has good protein, good carbohydrates, quality car carbohydrates, and fiber. So it's gonna help quench some of that hunger feeling and as well as it gives me a good sustained energy. So I'll nibble on that a little bit, get some water in there, and then in between the match and the final, I usually have a meal replacement drink, a shake. And the same thing, it's designed for weight loss. But it, it has a low glycemic index, really good protein, actually a lot of proteins, vitamins, minerals, all the good things that you need. And uh, I'll drink that right after the competition and that gets me through the final. So like a consistent energy though. But in a general sense, quality protein, plenty of vegetables, Fruits are great. I'm not a huge fruit guy, I just don't like the tartness of it. But I love, you know, juices and things like that. Or smoothies, I like smoothies a lot. Um, 
complex carbohydrates, stay away from your white breads or your simple stuff, and stay away from all the fluffy sugars and crap that you don't need. Leave my time. So I was long I'm sorry. That's okay. Okay, you have any more? What do I think about? That depends on the situation. That's a really good question. What do I think about when I shoot? I think about doing the dishes, changing diapers, things like that. Sometimes I do. Um, you know, there are some days, depending on the competition, there are some days my mind just kind of wanders, but it doesn't bother me. It's like I'm kind of working on autopilot. And as long as the thought doesn't distract me from what I'm doing, like it's a negative thought, you know, it could be just random, I don't know. Going fishing, or it could be whatever. But I'm on autopilot and performing well, and I'm not really paying attention. My mind's just kind of doing its own little thing. There are other times, though, like say in a final, if I'm a little bit nervous in a final, then I'll try to occupy my mind in the best way possible. So there is a specific thing that I'm doing. And what I try to minimize are just the random thoughts, like the things that just get in there, and it's like, you know, why would you think about that? It's irrational. You know, oh, you're going to shoot a nine. What? Are you serious? No. <laughs> <laughs> why would you think that? And I'll actually think that. Why would you think that? And so I'll say, well, all right, well, in this, in this moment, I'm distracted, obviously. So now I need to put something good in there, and I'll occupy it with something that, that's good. Let's say in the actual shot itself, like right, when I'm holding. If I am distracted or I'm really nervous, I'll repeat something. Some people repeat like a phrase over and over and over again. A lot of times what I do when I'm holding on the target, I'll just repeat over and over, 10 by, 10 by, 10 by, 10 by, until the shot goes, and it goes automatically. And what I'm doing is I'm occupying that little kid in my brain that just wants to go over here and over there. I'm telling you what to do. And you might wonder why I'm saying 10 by. I don't want to think 10 9. 10 9 means it has to be perfect. Because if you aim for perfect, the chance is you're going to make a big mistake. But 10-5, you're going to see that. And you're going to see it probably pretty often. So if I'm thinking 10-5, 10-5, 10-5, that means I want to take a quality shot, a good shot. And it usually is. But if I'm thinking 10-9, when I overhold it, I make a mistake. That's just my own. Uh, otherwise, 